and um, point out to me what communist regime has been successful over the years. Yeah, okay, you can do that if you want, but you won't be successful. Lots of capitalist regimes have been successful over the years. In fact, most of them recently have been successful. Uh, I'm not saying they weren't flawed. I'm not saying there's room for improvement. I'm saying they were successful. What China is doing is they're basically taking their billionaires because starting with uh, Deng Xiaoping, China decided to say, you know what, we're going to go ahead and, and start winking at this whole communism thing. We're going to let some people make some money, put a little bit of capitalism in there because when you instill smart people to do well by letting them make money and earn stuff and have a better life, they're going to do it. Well, President Xi has decided to rein that in. And the, the latest casualty of President Xi is a guy named Colin Huang. Now, you've probably never heard of him because, again, this stuff doesn't make the news. Colin Huang is a, is a billionaire. He's a young guy. Don't think he's 30, okay? In 2015, he founded a company in China called Pinduoduo. Now, you think, well, I've never heard of Pinduoduo. Well, okay. He... <laughs> he made, he, he's worth $36 billion, okay? A young guy who started this company, it's an e-commerce company, an e-commerce platform company, which mainly operates in China. But again, their economy is, they have four times the people that we have. Their economy is huge. And they're just starting out. So the guys who are getting in on the ground floor, like this Colin Huang, and starting out these e-commerce companies and these tech companies, they've just become billionaires squared, billionaires cubed but colin huang fought, fell out of favor with the chinese government they've decided that you know what you're not playing by the game that we want you to play by and when you do business in china you do as the government said says so because they've fallen out of favor and they're not letting them do certain things and they're imposing penalties on them because penalties like uh Crimes against the state. Okay, what is that? Basically, you make too much money. So they just start fining them, and they take their money, and they seize their assets, and they say you have to give so much. And so all of a sudden, all the people of the company, the company, they're donating billions and billions of dollars to uh, the agricultural systems of the uh, communist government. But it's never enough. Pinduoduo. duo and Colin Huang have fallen out of favor with President Xi. Colin Huang has lost $27 billion because he fell out of favor with communist China. Now, you think, well, what does that mean to me? Why do I even care about this? Well, how, the way it works in China is you can do whatever you want just so you also do what the communist government wants, what President Xi wants. There's one party, a one-party system there. It's the Communist Party. But, but more so than that, even President Xi's opponents are gone. They're in prison. They're killed. So nobody disagrees with President Xi because they want to wake up and have breakfast in the morning in their own house. So they do what he says. So all these hardworking, innovative Kings of the castle, captains of industry, use the term that you want in China. Basically, they're having their wealth taken from them. Now, what does that mean? Well, think about it. Why would, does anybody work? Because they want to make money. Why would anybody take the risk and work 23 hours a day for 4, 5, 10 years to make nothing or make no more money than the guy who's the garbage man. Nobody's going to do that. Nobody. So what President Xi is doing, basically, is he's taking the smart people. And all societies are like this. You, you've, got your top, you've got your top 20% that always contributes to 80% of the success of an economy. I mean, it's that way. The 80-20 rule works almost every time, every place, in every situation. And... Finance is no different. Commerce is no different. 
20% of the companies make 80% of the profit. 20% of the companies build 20 80% of the things. 20% of the people make 80% of the money. It just kind of works out that way in capitalism, okay? And when you get to the 1%, they really rule the roost because they have more money, okay? And the reason they got more money is normally it's not because they stole, cheated, lied, and swindled. It's because they're just smarter. They came up with a better idea. They worked harder. Fill in the blank. Now, are the rich and the ultra-rich taxed enough? That's another story for another day. But to just seize their wealth because they don't understand, they don't, they don't agree with the guy in charge. What that means is the elite, the twenty, the top twenty percent, the top one percent in China, they're going to go someplace else. Now, where do you think they're going to go? You have three guesses. No, it's not Pakistan. They're not going to go there. Guess number two. No, it's not North Korea. They won't be going there either. You got it. They'll be coming to the United States. And I've said this for many, many years, and it's just just true. Uh, you could talk about the United States and saying, yeah, our people are lazy. Our, our, our kids aren't very smart. Uh, we're not the country we used to be. Well, this has always been a country of immigrants. Most everybody listening to this podcast has had family come from someplace else. More of them are just going to be Chinese. And when they come here, they're going to succeed because they're smart, because they're hardworking. They're like anybody else. They're human beings. And they're going to want to come here because if they can't succeed there, they're going to succeed here. I like to say the United States is like uh, is like the New York Yankees. Yeah, they don't have much of a farm system maybe, but uh, man, can they sign the free agents. All you Chinese millionaires, billionaires, smart, super smart guys and gals, come on over here. The water's fine. We'd love to have you. <laughs> and as far as eating the rich goes, just remember, while everybody should pay their fair share in taxes, whatever that is, and maybe the rich in this country should pay more in taxes. That's another story for another day. But if you decide to eat the rich, the rich are going to jump off your plate and go someplace else. Just saying. Okay, now to the body of the podcast. 22 minutes of introduction. Holy mackerel. <laughs> that was longer than I wanted to go, but that's okay. Uh, Luis Alexando. Uh, he's one of the top guys in the UFO UAP community now. Is he a champion? Is he a charlatan? What's he all about? Uh, well, let's start off with with this week. And the the, whole, the newest term in the UFO community is Tic Tac UFOs. Well, there's been another Tic Tac UFO spotted this week uh, near a U.S. Air Force Base. That was according to Skywatcher. The guy who filmed it is a guy named Jason Sirachi. And he filmed several orbs and pill-like objects, Tic Tac-like objects, over an Air Force base, posted them to YouTube, posted them to Instagram. And you can see them on Instagram or YouTube. Uh, and they're, quite frankly, amazing. Now, what makes it even more amazing is these aerial phenomenon were said to have been reported over uh, Buckley Space Force Base. Yeah, it's an Air Force base, but it's the new the new unit that uh, President Trump introduced, the Space Force. So now Tic Tacs were filmed over the Buckley Space Force Air Base in Aurora, Colorado. Now the U.S. Space Force units were tasked with protecting U.S. satellites orbiting the planet and were first set up by President Trump in 2019. Mr. Sirachi, the guy who filmed uh, these Tic Tacs, shared numerous snippets of footage which showed the objects during broad daylight and, a ni and at night using a night vision camera but most of them are during the day. Now, the objects appear to change shape while others are similar to the infamous Tic Tac UFOs filmed by uh, the Navy pilots during the encounter back in 2004. Uh, and I've done a podcast on those Tic Tac UFOs that were filmed off the coast of San Diego. Now, it comes as the U.S. continues to probe UFOs, now more commonly known as UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. This is following a much, uh, much anticipated report by the Pentagon which again, told us a lot. They basically, that report by the Pentagon basically says, yep, there's stuff out there and we have no idea what it is. Not swamp gas, 
not weather balloons, not the planet Venus. We don't know. Now, the Pentagon UAP report confirmed there have been numerous unexplained encounters between U.S. military military and UFOs, and they did not rule out the possibility of these aircraft being alien spaceships, alien craft. They didn't rule it out. Now, uh, this uh, Jason Sirachi, who lives near the Air Force Base, believes... uh, that these Tic Tacs are not UFO are not man made, and they've been cry- and, and and he's been chronicling his sightings over the past few months. Now, in one video clip posted on Instagram, he says this was a Tic Tac UFO I saw uh, manifest, and then it shot into the clouds. This is not a drone or a balloon or any kind of aircraft that we know of. Now, the Space Force. Uh, the first in more than seventy years falls under. That's a new. The first. I don't want to say the department or whatever, because, you know, we've got the Navy, the Marines, Navy, Army, Air Force. Now we have the Space Force, okay? The Air Force was the last uh, entity that we created in this country. But it falls under the jurisdiction of the Air Force. Uh, almost 5,000 personnel, 77 spacecraft is what this thing has, okay? Uh, now, it's not intended, the Space Force is not intended to put troops in orbit, but protects U.S. Air assets in space, like the hundreds of satellites used for commercial communication, for surveillance, etc. So it's not just a, like Star Trek, okay? It's a for real deal, and, and there is a for real need for that because we've got hundreds of satellites orbiting the Earth, okay? We need to protect them because if somebody shoots down all our satellites, you can't get this podcast, we can't communicate to one another anyway, everything goes to pot. But there are some UFO hunters that believe that the Space Force will play a role in investigating UAPs with the Pentagon uh, due to work with them, okay? Uh, Back in June, the Pentagon released the UAP Task Force report, which revealed 144 unexplained UFO encounters with the military, including the tic-tac-shaped UFOs buzzing U.S. warships and airplanes. So these pictures by Mr. Sirachi show more of these tic tac UFOs, okay? Now, legislation included requests from the Department of Defense to publish a report to the Senate Intelligent Committee on UAPs. The preliminary assessment was based on reports sent to the Secretive UAP Task Force between 2014 and 2021. Um, And again, of all those 144, only one was definitely identified, which was said to be a deflated balloon. The other 143... They don't know. And again, they don't rule out alien aircraft. In fact, they're probably hoping alien aircraft. Uh, One report that I I read said, you know what? We don't know what they are. But if these things are ships that are from Russia or China, we can't track these. We can't spot them. We can't shoot them down. We can't defend against them. So that's a big deal. So they're almost hoping (laughs) <laughs> from someplace else, okay? Now, the whole UFO UAP thing has, 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 has escalated, it's exploded. And one of the guys at the forefront of this is a gentleman named Luis Alizondo. Now, you've probably heard the name. I mean, he's, he's been in the UFO spotlight for probably 10, 15 years, okay? Who is Luis Alizondo? Okay, he's not just some guy who is on coast to coast every now and then, although he is, okay, but he's the real deal. Luis Elizondo is a former U.S. Army counterintelligence secret special agent and a former employee of the United States Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence. Now, he resigned in 2017, and after he did, he joined up with... uh, the Two to Stars Academy as the Director of Global Security and Special Programs. That's Tom DeLong's company. Now, Alizondo left the company in 2020, last year. Uh, the company produced the History Channel documentaries Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation, in which Mr. Alizondo stars in. So that was a uh, Two to Stars production. Luis Alizondo was the star of that show. Uh, He's also the former director of the now defunct Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, ATIP. 
for short. Now, that was a $22 million special access program limited or initiated, I should say, by the Defense Intelligence Agency in order to study an unidentified aerial phenomenon, UFOs, also known as, uh, as UAPs. Now, this program is associated with the release of the 